We are here today in New York during Climate Week and the UN General Assembly, coming together with CEOs and executives from all walks of life to hear directly from them on how they can help to create sustainable impact through their businesses. The worldwide organ shortage is a critical global health issue, and for people with organ failure, transplantation is the last resort. Around 160,000 transplants are performed around the world every year, but that is a fraction of the total demand. It's only about 10%. In the US alone, 17 people die every day waiting for an organ. Chris Rosenblatt is the CEO of Ex Vivo. Chris. Hi, Paul. Nice Paul Vieman, good to meet you. And a man with deep experience in the organ transplant market. And it's his vision that nobody should die waiting for an organ. And the company is headquartered in? Uh, Gothenburg, Sweden. Okay, did you come in from Sweden? Uh, I actually attended a transplant conference prior to this. I've been here for a week. Got it. Oh, in New York? Yeah, I was actually up in Toronto, but uh, okay. came down to New York. Ex Vivo is a leader in preserving donor organs outside the body prior to transplantation. The company is focused on the four most common transplants, the heart, lung, liver, and kidney and drives innovation to support transplant teams around the world. So that's something we want to make people aware of. Right, right. And uh, so that's the reason why we actually have Climate Week. Got it, got it. And so the company um, is, is about creating a sustainable, more, more sustainable organ transplant system. That is part of it. So Chris, how is Climate Week treating you so far? Very well, thank you. Yeah. Is this your company's first time? This is definitely the first time we're here. Interesting. Because I think, you know, when people think about organ transplants, look, we, we've all seen it on TV, we've seen it in the movies, but you don't think about it as a, as a climate issue. No, correct. And, and uh, for a long time we thought the same. Right. But we have realized that if we're going to increase the number of transplants, uh, especially using the mode of transport we have today, which is predominantly private airplanes, we will, there will be a huge carbon footprint. Right. Right. So, so it's very energy intensive. True. Got it. Got it. And the technology, I mean, w when was the first heart transplant? It was done in 1967 in Cape Town by Christian Bernard. Okay. And, and has the technology changed that much since then? To a large extent, we used the same technology back then, which is the beer cooler with ice. So we triple bag the heart and we put it in the ice in a beer cooler and then we transport it on a typically private airplane. Right, so I mean, it's remarkable to think that one of the most critical operations that someone could undergo basically comes down to a beer cooler yeah. with ice. It's very basic technology yeah. today. But your technology, Ex Vivo, is, is changing that game. Completely. What we try to do is something different. We perfuse the organ, which means to have a blood substitutes run through the organ. Uh, okay. in, in a box uh, in order to keep the heart alive for much more than the typical four hours you can get with a beer cooler today. Got it. So, so, so right now the standard is essentially four hours? Yeah, the standard is okay. approximately four and hours. And your technology? Uh, we, we have seen so far in, in a human setting that we can go to 12 hours. 12 uh, hours. In animal studies we're up to 24 hours. Uh, so we That's know that a we can huge prolong. improvement. Yeah, it's huge. And, uh, and, and it comes back to the perfusion, right? And you're saying that that's, instead of just putting it in a freezer, it sounds like what you're doing is almost keeping the organ more alive. Is that right? True, that's exactly what we do. We try to mimic how the organ would feel if it would be inside the body. Uh, so we need to give it nutrition, we need to give it a blood substitute, we need to oxygenate that so it gets oxygen because all cells need to stay alive. We also need to uh, have uh, the heart should get the same treatment from the autonomous nerve system as it would be if it would be inside, but it's in a box. So it's Got quite it. advanced research to get to this liquid or, or uh, blood substitute Got it. to give the heart that. Got it. So instead of, yeah, instead of an inert box that just keeps something preserved, the ex vivo box, if you will, really is, is a system that is preserving the organ in a much different way. Yeah, so it's very different because in a, in a beer cooler with ice, from you take out the heart, you will get cell death, increased cell death, and the organ function will, will deteriorate. Right. But if we can give them a better environment, which is more like 
inside the body, we can prolong that time of out of body time. Right. To what we have seen so far, approximately 12 hours, we believe that we can go much further with future studies. But that is still to be seen. Got it. But this is, it sounds like this is just the beginning. This is, we're early in this new process of figuring out ways to preserve an organ for longer. Yeah, true. This is early, uh, early days. We have, have run uh, an Australian trial where we could prolong to between six to nine hours successfully. 69? Six to nine, sorry. Six, oh, six, six to nine. Six to nine. Uh, we have run a European trial with really good patient outcome. And we're now taking this technology to the US and uh, we sat down with the US best and brightest heart transplant surgeons and asked them what they needed. And uh, we have now especially designed after their needs a US trial, so, uh, which is currently including patients here in the United States. Wow, so this is happening right now? Happening right now in the US. That's so oh. exciting. Yeah. And so I think this is, I'm starting to put the pieces together here. If we can keep the organ alive for longer or keep it healthier and stronger for longer, that's going to lower the energy requirements because everything's not going to be so rushed, right? Exactly. And that's what we hear during this week. It's not, we love to save patients. We love to make the healthcare professionals get a better life. But we're here because we think we can play a very big role by not using the mode of transportation, which is typically private airplanes, jets. Right. If we can do it with commercial airliners, that we've proven that we can, uh, we can do it with cars that would substantially lower the carbon emission from our part of the industry. Right. And the technology is there today. We just need to get it approved by the FDA. That's why we do a trial. Got it. Uh, but we hope that we can roll out this technology and improve the environment. Right. And, and what's the timeline? If the trial goes well, how soon could this be in hospitals and in emergency care centers? It's always hard to, to say how the FDA would approve a product, but right. we have typically when, when, the, when the study finishes a one year follow up time uh, mm -hmm. on, on patient survival. And then we see if it's how many months or, or a year that the FDA needs to go through all the documentation for right. approval. But probably in 27, we will see this in the uh, in US transplant clinics. Right, that's just a couple of years away. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think obviously the health benefits are, are obvious, right? More organs, more su a higher success rate, uh, more people able to get the organs that they need. The, the, the climate we talked a little bit about the reducing the energy requirements. I mean, there's really a whole, this is a, a holistic solution that, that hinges on a problem that everyone is aware of, right? There's, a, there's, a, there's an overall social benefit here that your company is working on. I think right now when you have approximately four hours to, from, from donation to transplantation, that allows for typically a two, two and a half hour flight time on a private jet, which is both expensive and the carbon footprint is extremely high. As we right. all know. Right. Uh, so if we can increase that, we can allow for a more structured uh, process and we can improve not only the transplant procedure itself, but actually the matching between the donor and the uh, recipient. Right. As well as why we're here at Climate Week, we can, can improve the carbon footprint for, for, the, yeah, for the planet. For the whole process. Yeah. So yeah. You, could, you could use much more uh, ground transportation they could before and you can use for example a commercial airliner uh, mm. we even had a case where, where which were featured in Landsat where we could fly with a commercial airliner from from the Americas to Europe and we actually performed a donation in in, in the West Indies and uh, transplantation in France Wow so a, a transatlantic transplant yeah, on a commercial flight wow. which commercial flights are today hardly or to my knowledge, not used even in, within the United States. Right. Extraordinary. Well, I mean, that's just a huge, uh, just to cross that off the balance sheet, that's an immense savings. That would definitely be an immense saving for the healthcare system, especially yeah. since we need to do more transplants. We need to make them sustainable. Right. And, and you mentioned, and I think this is important, every, every surgeon, every doctor, every healthcare professional is going to want to hear this. Um, this is also about, this is not just about improving patient outcomes, but it's about improving their quality of life. Yeah, very much. And that's, that's so important because we know there's a fatigue in the healthcare system. I would say that is especially applies to transplant surgeons. They work typically 24 hours uh, long right. shifts. Uh, there's a lot of stress. You don't know when you will get an organ or not. So uh, when you talk to them, most of them have missed their own 50s birthdays and etc. Right. So if we can uh, reduce that stress by extending that body time, 
that would be a huge win for the for the transplant team. And and I think the best, what I heard the best quote was, well, I just came from a transplant meeting when when one of the leading U.S. heart transplant surgeons just said, quote that. We have people running around in the middle of the night on private jets. This just is sustainable. Right. And I couldn't agree more. He's right. Right. And you, you mentioned actually you just came from a, a cardiac conference. Your company is focused on a, on a specific solution for hearts right now. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. That's the thing what we spend most of our research money on is a specific solution mm -hmm. to improve and increase, improve patient outcome and increase the out of body time for hearts. Right. Right. Our, definitely the most advanced product we have in our portfolio. Got it, got it. Well, this has been a real education for me, which is a fascinating topic that I think everybody can relate to. I think, like we said, everybody has seen that urgent scene on, on television and in movies when the organ is being rushed from a helicopter or, or taken out of a car or whatever. Fascinating conversation. Is there anything else you want to tell me about Ex vivo? I just want to say that we are here for the patients. Our vision is that nobody should die waiting for an organ, but we are aware that we need to have a sustainable transplant team who actually perform the transplants and we are aware that the environment there need to be a sustainable environment around us so we work on even though we focus on the patient we try to work and make the, this world a better world for all of us saving lives through sustainability yeah chris thank you so much fascinating thank you so much Climate Week is about solving problems it's about finding sustainable solutions across industries around the world Ex Vivo is aiming to improve a technology that's been largely unchanged for nearly 50 years. How to preserve human organs outside the body while they are transported from donor to recipient. At the core of Ex Vivo's mission is developing products, services, and systems that not only help the healthcare system cut its carbon footprint and cut costs, but save lives and in a more sustainable way.